Hey guys, 21st of December today, we are going to do our update on Bitcoin and really just following on from yesterday's analysis, we're going to be focusing on the short term analysis. We really mentioned that we were going to be looking for that gap fill, which we have seen. Also looking for the lower warning line of the pitchfork to get hit, which we have also seen. And yeah, it looks very much like the completion of the, this bull flag. Now, the question is with this price action here is it looking impulsive so we'll break that down we'll have a closer look and i'll talk about the key things that i'm looking out for for confirmation on top of that another thing that we're going to look at is the inverse relationship between the dollar and bitcoin and how at present the dollar is still looking incredibly weak so we'll have a little bit of a look at that one as well so if interested then stay tuned All right, guys, back with another update. So, as I say, you want to get these updates out more frequent to you guys. And first of all, before we do any talking about Bitcoin, I want to say a massive thank you to you all because I asked, you know, I wanted to see how many likes we could get off the last video. And I am honestly flattered with the number of likes. We got to 270 as at the time I'm doing this video. Uh, we did have a target of 300 for me to do this video but i couldn't ignore the number of likes that you gave because there was only roughly just over a thousand views and so to get that many likes was pretty incredible um a lot of love shown a lot of congratulations to me so really uh i'm really honestly very very appreciative for that so yeah i felt kind of indebted to you and wanted to get this video out for that um i can only really blame it on the youtube algorithm the fact that still not getting that many views which is fair enough i'm not a regular poster so i understand the algorithms uh may downgrade me for that but uh, hopefully we can change all of that so i am going to see can we get 300 likes on this video um next opportunity for me really to get a video update for you would be probably wednesday uh because i've got quite a few plans tomorrow but um yeah definitely hoping to get it out for you but uh, another way I want to say thank you to you guys, what I'm going to do at the end of this video, we're going to do a raffle using the comments from the previous YouTube video. Winner of the raffle will get free access to the works. So that's my educational course covering everything I've learned in trading. Um, so yeah, I want to return the um, the um, the kindness of your comments. So uh, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'll probably do something at the end of each video, maybe a raffle for the juice, which is another product. So just uh quickly bringing you to the product so this is at my website web618.com so this is what will sorry this one this is what will be on offer at the end of this video in the raffle so check that out at the end um and yeah from here onwards probably at the end of each video we will put this um at the end so we'll do a raffle at the end of each video for free access to the juice which is basically all the the major indicators that i focus on um so it's like a condensed version of the works, really. Anyway, with that said, let's bring you back to the technical analysis for Bitcoin. So, uh, yeah, following on from the last video, we were talking about how we we're looking for a bull flag here. We mentioned 24K being a very, very significant level where I was looking to find consolidation beneath resistance, which is what you look out for when you're looking for, you know, a, uh, a continuing continuation pattern, which is going to uh, break out to the upside. Okay. So it's an ugly pattern, definitely a very ugly pattern that we're playing out here. Um, and yes, it's obviously got the option of going up and down as always. Yeah. So what we really need to do is think about key levels that we want to look at. What kind of price action do we want to see that will kind of give us that incentive to go long or short? Yeah. So as I mentioned in the last video, we've got our dotted red line here. So we were expecting a gap fill. Obviously, a gap was created with the weekend price action going higher and higher. And we closed the gap pretty emphatically, to be honest, came down pretty quick. And I mentioned that we could certainly come down pretty quick. Reason being is if it is um, a flat pattern that we're making out, then the final leg, the C wave down, is often pretty emphatic, pretty quick, often serves as a very good shakeout opportunity. But I mentioned that a key thing I'd be looking out for was, was testing this lower warning line. So this is the pitchfork going back 
check out the previous video if you want to see how the pitch fault was um, determined. And if you want my long-term outlook on Bitcoin, explanation of my long-term targets, just go back to a couple of videos back. So it is this one here where we talk about the target of 30K. So yeah, if that's if you want the long-term analysis. We're very much focusing on the short-term analysis here because there's quite a few things to talk about. So as I say, we were looking at this uh, lower warning line to get tagged. So we've seen that hit. We've seen our gap filled. All of these key things. Now, as I say, it's a complex play out here. The question is, do you stop your do you start your corrective count analysis from here, where we've got our all time high, where you can see three waves down quite nicely. Um, you can argue, is it a one, two, three, four, five down? Though the four would be very short lasting relative to the two so it's not the most regular count in my opinion it looks a bit more three wave-ish coming down having said that for me I, i'm of the impression that we finished our previous impulse coming into this flag at around this point we get this kind of regular flat playing out here then we get this complex move up uh, looking very much like a double three up to here and then we get again um, a three wavish move down to here now the interesting thing you'll see if we do our fib extension tool and you just do the fib extension of this so down to here yeah and then if you extend that all the way to our all-time high that we reached let's bring it across so all-time high here you'll see that's just roughly around the 1.236 1.382 and then the following wave is a 1.618 extension so you've got that being a 1.618 extension of this initial correction and this is often what i'll look for in an expanding flat yeah so you'll get your your, your first correct well in this case i'd call it an expanded double three rather than an expanded flat the reason being is the final leg looks three wavish rather than five wavish in my opinion so i'd call it an expanding double three so basically a wxy count um where this is y and that's why it's made up of three legs because it's a y wave and not a c wave okay so <clears throat> Yeah, as I say, the first leg um, is what you're expanding on. So the following leg, um, which will be, in this case, your X wave, uh, you can see it falls just short, just shy of the 1.382. And the C, uh, not the C, the, the Y wave of the expanded double three then hits the 1.618. Yeah, so th this kind of fib combination is what I look for. So uh, the 1.382 extension followed by the 1.618. So we saw that pretty nicely. We hit the lower warning line and um, yeah, we, we saw a pretty nice bounce. Now you can see this pitchfork holding price action to the downside. We've got our first, second and third pivots here. It's a modified shift pitchfork. Um, so it came down pretty good. So a little bit of a pause at the median line before continuing down. Then we come back and retest the lower median line before coming down. And we only get closing price action. The cl sorry, the closing price action stayed very much within the pitchfork. So we're on the one hourly time frame here. Okay. Now we've run into the median line. But the big question is, is this impulsive going up? Or is it just a dead cap bounce getting ready to come down further? Now, that is important because if it does come down further, I'd be a little bit concerned about this whole thing being a bull flag. Uh, I'd probably question it. Maybe it is a bit of a reversal pattern that's playing out. Uh, and I would be a bit concerned about us coming back to um, support down at around 19,182, which is where the previous ODB level is. Yeah. But that said, not going to focus too much on the bearish scenario just yet because I'm of the opinion this can still hold at present. It's not a, a very pretty move up here and when we'll have a quick look at ripple and ethereum where again the, the count isn't great um but we'll see how it plays out this is the 15 minute time frame now now you can argue we've got a one two three four five ending here yeah then you can argue we've got an expanded flat so you've got an a b c yeah so is that your wave one and two and then we go up from here well Again, I'm a little bit cautious about calling that the end of the two because you can see the subsequent price action here does not look like the beginning of a wave three. Okay, so what it could be is a one, two, three, four, five, A, B, C representing maybe wave W of a more complex correction. So we're, we've done the W, we might be forming an X wave. Who knows, it might turn out to be a triangle uh, and, and then, sorry, not a triangle, but probably 
more of a uh, it could turn out to be more of a, a flat pattern and then we form our final y wave yeah but we should not be taking out this low that is the main thing as i say taking out this low would be coming pretty deep beneath this lower warning line which is not what i'd want to see okay now a good way again to look at the sentiment in the chart is using camarilla pivots so just bringing on the camarilla pivots i want to show you another reason we found support in and around this level uh, if we go on the hourly you'll see that the s3 got hit very very nicely so this is often what you want to see when you're on the hourly time frame if you look at the camarilla pivots you basically for each period represents one week so from here to here was the previous week this week started here and we're going that'll be the end of the week here so with this finishing way above the r4 that tells you we're going into a bull trend yeah now what you want to see in the following period is support off of either the s3 or the s4 okay now the s3 has already been tagged as i say it came down pretty sharp and you can see it held as pretty good support so that is the level with that we came down to um so yeah another just bit of explanation for why we found a bit of support here using camarilla pivots now if we just take a look at the 15 minute this is where i really look to see the overall sentiment you can see we dropped out of the s4 a little bit concerning especially if we close the day because on the 15 minute time frame each period here represents one day if we finish beneath the s4 for the day that is a sign of weakness and i will be a little bit concerned about us coming down further at present you can see we're very much at the s4 uh, so ideally i'd like to see us finish the day above this s4 level which sits at around twenty two thousand eight hundred dollars yeah so i want to see us finish above this level uh, just to give us that bullish sentiment and give me a bit more reassurance that we're not going to take out this low okay um so yeah, they, they are the main things that I'm looking out for, really. Um, so this S4 is the main thing. As I say, looking at the other bits of TA, so pitchforks, Elliott Wave, um, Camarilla Pivots on the hourly time frame, there's lots of reasons for support in and around this area. Okay. Um, yeah, so as I say, very key line, this one here. All right. Now, I did mention we'll take a quick look at Ethereum and Ripple, which do, again, give me that slight concern. If we pull up Ethereum here, um we're on the 15 minute going up doesn't look too impulsive that said the move down from uh, following this move up again doesn't look too impulsive coming down so i'm just wondering whether we do get another slight wick to the downside to form the the absolute low and then we start bouncing up on ethereum could turn out something like that uh, if we look at the bigger picture so let's take off these camera of pivots just a moment but basically yeah i was looking at this modified shift pitch for where we hit the lower warning line pretty nicely which gave a reason for this uh bounce here now the question is is it just a bounce or is it the start of a major you know is it a significant low when we take out the highs from here uh we're going to find out shortly as i say the elliott wave count isn't too clean at present and if i just show you on ripple also we get a, 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 again another pretty nice pitchfork it's following again the modified shift pitchfork here using our first second and third pivot so we went up pretty emphatically came down in a more slower corrective sequence we've hit the 0.618 fib retracement and again the problem is it's actually more obvious on ripple it looks like the bounce has gone up on three waves again it's not ideal you know when you want to look for a potential of call this a potential bottom so as i say for me i'm sure you can probably try and blag a five wave count out of this but for me just looking at this it looks like a first wave second and third there's not really many other ways of looking at that so it does put me off a little bit calling this the bottom and again like on ethereum we might just come down a little bit lower and, and uh, if it is to be bullish might just take out this low and then push higher again so I would say Ethereum and Ripple, short term on the 50 minute, they're looking a little bit weaker than Bitcoin because although we might just see us come down, take out this low just slightly and then push higher, on Bitcoin, you can see we're a little bit higher up than our significant low here. So whilst Ethereum and Ripple come down, we might just only come down a little bit here and stay within this lower warning line on the pitchfork. So... We're yet to see how it plays out. As I say, Bitcoin dominance is still looking strong. So that would be in keeping with um, Bitcoin, you know, not getting hurt as much as Ethereum and Ripple. 
Okay, so they're the main things I'm looking out for. As I say, 15 minute Camarillo is really what I'm focusing on to give me that uh, kind of verification as to the uh, the bullish sentiment. Um, so we'll wait and see how that plays out. Now, I did mention we'll take a look at the dollar. So I just want to pull up this um, screenshot that I saved from earlier. So this is on the weekly time frame. On the top chart, we've got the dollar. Bottom chart, we've got Bitcoin. So following our uh, March 2020, where the coronavirus really hit, there's a very clear trend that's developing here. Well, obviously, the dollar got hit very badly. Um, but and Bitcoin basically showed that very clear inverse relationship. So Bitcoin's continued to go strong. So this really highlights the, the relationship that we're seeing. OK, so I think another key factor to take into consideration right now is whether the dollar is weak or strong. OK, so if we just pull up the dollar quickly, just to take a look at that, uh, just bear with me. So here's the dollar on the daily time frame. So basically on the dollar, in fact, let's go on the weekly. We lost a key ODB level here. This one here is at 90. So very nice psychological level. We lost it. Yeah, it looked like we might get a little bit of a bounce. Eventually we ended up losing it. In my opinion, on the dollar, we come down to this median line for this pitchfork here. So this pitchfork is a shift using our first, second and third pivots. I feel like we come down and test the median line here in and around 86. Yeah, so for the dollar baskets come down to 86. There is an ODB level uh, at this point here at 87.9, though we did pretty much already test that with this low here. So I wouldn't be surprised for us to come down a little bit lower, tag the median line. Uh, so basically that's suggesting that we are going to see continued weakness here in the dollar and another thing i want to point out if we look on the euro just going on let's go on the daily time frame uh, so we are obviously in overbought territory here you can see that we're at the upper warning line of this pitchfork but it is looking strong especially today so we came down pretty emphatically and this was on the news where a lot of countries were locking down on the uk uh, because obviously we've got this variant uh, mutant strain of the coronavirus, which is spreading a lot faster than the original virus. Um, so that kind of news obviously put a, it was a big hit to the pound, uh, but also on Europe because there's a lot of traffic, especially between through the the Channel Tunnel, that is being held up right at this moment. So um, not good for the economy really. But that said, it took a tumble and it absolutely bounced. So to me, the message that I'm getting here is despite the fact that there's a lot of negative news about, you know, for the euro, for the pound right now, uh, especially running into um, these Brexit um, decisions coming to a, a termination at the end of this month. Um, yeah, there's a lot of reason to be bearish on euro and pound from a fundamental point of view. But yet we've seen this strength intraday if we go in on the hourly you'll see here how it's quite a, a good bounce back so we came down and a real really nice bounce back here okay so that is often what you'll get you'll get a um, correlation don't forget the reason i'm looking at the euro here is because it's it's pretty much an inverse relationship to the dollar which basically gives it a positive correlation with bitcoin so as long as the euro goes up you, you'll often see bitcoin following suit so and here you can see as i say you can see some good strength coming in which basically tells me that despite the bad news we've got with regards to europe right now somehow the dollar still continues to fall so it sounds like investors are still even more bearish on the dollar despite this bad news surrounding europe um so yeah i just wanted to pull that one up as well just food for thought really obviously uh, we're yet to see how the dollar will do. It may obviously bounce back pretty soon. We'll have to see. Um, but yeah, coming back to Bitcoin, those are the key things I'm looking at. As I say, we're still within the lower warning line. If we lose it, I'll be getting concerned. As I say, the 15 minute Camarilla pivots, if we just pull it up, I want to see how we finish the day in relation to this Camarilla pivot. So 22,800. You can see, you know, there's a bit of a fight between the bulls and bears for this level right now. Um, but yeah, I would like to see it above this level, which will give me the added confirmation that this is a major low. So those are the key things that we're looking out for. So that pretty much wraps up the TA for today's video. And um, yeah, like I said, we can move on to the raffle that we spoke about. So let's head over to our YouTube random comment picker. So I've already put in the URL. Yeah, so I'm just going to click start on this one. So let's start this one and we'll see who the winner is. So if it decides to do it, bear with me. 
let's just make sure we've got that URL again. Let's click the video, get that URL. And okay, let's get the comments first. So that makes sense. So that should be done. And now we should be able to start. Here we go. So Paul Fraser, you are our winner. And yeah, so what I'll ask you to do, Paul Fraser, I'm going to ask you to send over an email. Um, let's just read the comment for this. Thanks and congratulations. I see someone already mentioned blurry for me. It's the, yeah, obviously a bit of an issue with the video initially. It must have been rendering at the mo at the time. But yeah, many thanks um, for the congratulations there. And uh, yeah, as I say, you've got 48 hours just to send me an email. My email you will find within every video in the description. It's uh, at the bottom. So if you scroll down, here you go, wave618 at gmail.com. And just be mindful of the spelling. Yeah. Um, uh, send, a, send us an email within 48 hours and I will be able to send you the link for free access to the works. All right. So that's what we've done this week. As I say, wanted to repay you guys for your, your kindness, really. And um, yeah, from now on, as I say, what I want to do is a for every. So the comments from this video will go into the raffle for the next video uh, where you'll have the opportunity for free access to the juice which as I say, covers all the key indicators, it covers pitch force, covers camera the pivots. Uh, it's got my Elliott Wave videos just to have everything nicely together. Um, oh, and I also cover ODBs, that's the oldest daily blocks, which is the best way I like to focus on horizontal levels. Um, as well as a long module about uh, what I've learned in trading. Um, so yeah, that is all there. And uh, yeah, again, massive thank you to you all for, for the likes that you gave. Really motivated to create more content for you guys. Let's see if we can hit that 300 uh, like target. All right, guys, going to wrap it up. Take care.